Hey, fun fans. To get you pumped for infinite recharge, our friends at West Coast Products have provided a giveaway of a Spartan number 25 or number 35 chain tensioner. To enter, be a YouTube subscriber and let us know in the comments your top prediction for infinite recharge. You can enter in any video that has this intro and the winner will be announced in the fun discord on Saturday, January 4th. So make sure you comment below. First Updates Now videos are brought to you by Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers, internships, and co-ops. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. Let's move on to our, uh, next, our first team of this group, which is Team 433. Catherine, what did you think of them? Yeah, so 433 was yet another one of these clean submissions that looked pretty good. Um, Unfortunately, and I know I've done Catathon before, I know a lot of times there can be some big mix-ups in getting the files right, but unfortunately the CAD files they submitted were not quite the same as what was pictured in the renders. So the renders look like it's a pretty uh, clean elevator, a uh, single or two-stage elevator, and a pretty simple just spit it in, spit it out, intakes, uh, reminiscent of 2018, and it looks like a pretty good effort. Um, all told, I wish I could have actually gotten the CAD file for what's pictured in the renders because it looks like a pretty good robot. Um, so team uh, 433, Boosted Monkeys, ranked at 61. Hmm. Boosted Monkeys. Nice. Yep. All right, uh, let's go on to team 483. Troy, what do you think of them? So we got team 43, the Mongolians, placed in rank 35. Uh, two team members from FRC 115. This robot was kind of interesting. Uh, so they had a diffy swerve and then a constant force spring shooter. I don't think it's pictured in the render on screen, but uh, they were kind of using these constant force springs that they would pull back and then release to kind of shoot the puck. And uh, I have some issues with that, but it's still a very interesting concept. I haven't really seen that before. Um, this robot was kind of missing a lot of detail. There were some things that were like weren't actually attached to anything. They were just kind of floating in space. But uh, the concept is definitely interesting. Yeah, a constant force shooter, that definitely seems like a very interesting concept. I'd be interested to see how that would work in real life. Um, all right, uh, let's go on to Team 489. Brian, what did you think of them? Team 489, Warp Speed 2.0, not 1.0, rank 65 uh, from FRC Team 4239. Had some pretty cool ideas going on. Um, the first thing that they did was have a dedicated blocking mechanism, which was actually really cool. It was one of the first that I saw. But um, sadly, they did something that I didn't like, which was instead of bolting their 775s to their mechanism, they decided to clamp them on the outside with a screw. Ooh. So FTC um, vibes. Yeah, I didn't really like that. But they did have all of their wires catted, so I gave them plus 100 points, and um, <laughs> that's what I call the day. Yeah, that's uh, that that's one way to mount your 775s. I don't know if it's the right way, but it's the <laughs> way. Um, all right, uh, let's move on to Team 358. Let's see if they uh, clamp their 775 Pros as well. I don't think they did, no. But I'll, oh gosh. So this name, uh, PMP, Penguin Monkey Poodle. Not sure what that is, but it's interesting. The robot is as well. Um, <laughs> this is another, like... A, uh, one of just the themes of this game was a lot of some pretty small, agile robots, and this was another another contender. Um, this had a pretty, like, an FTC-style uh, lift, sorry, FTC-style lift, um, that looked like it would have been pretty effective. Um, it had some rigidity and some mounting concerns, but overall it looked uh, like a pretty good implementation of that style on an FRC scale. Um, so overall, it was really cool to see some of that. And then uh, they had some really neat things going on in their drivetrain that were a little shaky on the execution, but just overall good concepts. So this, was a, this was a fun robot to judge. So Team PMP from uh, FRC Team 333 <laughs> uh, ranked 57. So great job, guys. Yeah, I would love to hear the story behind that name. Uh, may, yeah. If you're in chat, uh, Team... 358. Uh, we'd love to hear what the story is behind Penguin Monkey Poodle. Uh, yep. <laughs> all right, uh, let's move on to our next team, which is Team 472. 
Yeah, so we got 472 team swanks here. I was kind of be hope I was kind of hoping it would be two swerve tank drives, but sadly it wasn't. Uh, this is three team members from 2283, and I'm kind of going to focus on three team members because this was a very disjointed robot to me, and it seemed like it kind of broke down into the intake slash uptake, uh, the shooter and the drivetrain. And my main issue was like it seems like they were made by three different people, and then just put into the CAD. So like definitely great practice for each one of those things separately, but the integration just was not there. Like I think you can see the shooter is like kind of inside the uptake and the puck wouldn't actually get to the shooter. There's some interfering components. Uh, not a lot of detail at all, no belly pan, electronics, et cetera. So a lot of points lost in the detail category, sadly. I'm just gonna say it the way I it's cool to see, uh, yeah, it's really cool to see all the systems coming together. It just needed a little bit more work uh, when they all came together. Kind of weird way to say that there. Anyways, uh, let's move on to our next team, which is Team 512 with another uh, good meme name. Yep, Team 512 Whitehawk Robotics, ranked 48, and that was a single-member team, John. Um, this robot was actually really small and compact, which I liked for this game. I think that's a useful strategy to have when catting a robot for this game. Um, it was another dual jointed arm, but this ro robot reminded me a lot of teams from 2018. Um, I really liked the, they had an extendable intake with some two pistons, one on either side, which I thought was pretty cool and they got creativity points for that. Um, but other than that, their gusseting could have been a bit better. They've got some nicely catted parts, but not really manufacturable, but they did have a virtual four bar, which all good to see, virtual stuff is cool. And uh, their bearing setup was really good. They kind of copied 254, but hey, that's the strategy nowadays. <laughs> yeah, steal from the best, invent the rest. Uh, all right, uh, Cawthron, uh you're going to be our next judge. What did you think of Team 423? Yeah, Team 40, 423 had a pretty good submission with uh, their Team 2702 Rebels uh, from the FRC team, 2702. Um, they had some really cool sheet metal going on with this robot. Uh, fairly low on detail with the electronics, unfortunately, but they did have one inclusion that I really appreciated and that they actually had flywheel weights on their shooter wheels. And this is a common thing throughout almost all of the robots I judge. They'd have a shooter shooting a pretty large, like a pretty heavy Delrin puck and no thought put towards inertia or kinetic energy or mo like any of that. And so it was very much appreciated. This team actually went the extra mile and, you know, put some thought into the physics and the mechanics of shooting the pucks. So that's very much appreciated. Uh, they also had something they mentioned in their scouting document called their launcher. You can see it sort of at the bottom center of their drivetrain. I think was supposed to be like a spring-loaded cylinder or something to launch off the wall and start getting, you know, that, that early scrum right at the beginning of the match to accelerate as fast as possible. But they didn't actually CAD any of the mechanics of it. There wasn't enough detail for me to really tell what it was supposed to be. So it uh, might have been a really cool concept. Uh, one of the few things I saw that kind of addressed that issue, but they didn't really leave enough detail. Aside from that, uh, some of the stuff, the handoff and the intake to the shooter was a bit rough and needed some work. Probably wouldn't have worked that well in real life. But overall, a pretty good submission that I really enjoyed looking through. So uh, this team ranked at 28th. Yeah, that uh, the spring-loaded piston guy that you're talking about—it's a really cool concept. Uh, it, like you said, I would have loved to see more of, or them put a little bit more into that. Yeah, um, unfortunately, what you can see in the render is all that was there. There was nothing on the inside. So, oh well. Oh well. Um, all right, uh, let's move on to our next team, which is Team Four O Seven. So we've got Team Four O Seven. Void here, rank 47 in the catathon. Kind of interesting coincidence there. Two team members from FRC 862. Uh, so this robot, uh, basically just kind of single jointed arm, you know, 330, that's my jam. Uh, but there were some details missing. That was kind of my main issue. And there was uh, kind of the geometry on the puck handling as a whole was kind of throwing me off. And the placement for the limelight, uh, it seems like it would have some issues actually seeing the target correctly while they're going to position. Uh, other than that, it's just... Pretty simple robot, intake, outtake, all combined. Uh, I do have, there's this little hill I die on sometimes when people use a, a multi-port manifold for a single solenoid because weight inefficiency, but you know, whatever, it's detailed. This is kind of... <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're just going, over, going over it with a fine-tooth comb. Yeah. 
our, yeah, that goes to show how hard our judges were looking at these robots to find <laughs> details such as the manifold. Um, all right, uh, let's move on to our next team, which is Team 522. Team 522, the cheesy. That that come out? <laughs> all right. Uh, anyways, uh, team also ranks 69. Really nice stuff going on here uh, from FRC 294. Their robot was actually pretty detailed. I liked it a lot. Um, the gusseting was well done, and the shooter looks like it actually would work. So that puts them pretty high in the catathon, actually. The only thing is they did, had some weird scoop stuff going on at the bottom of their intake that would definitely get caught on the carpet. If you guys remember 2017, lots of carpet issues with the ground gear intake. So a lot of teams had that issue, so watch out for that. The drivetrain gearbox is actually pretty cool. I think it was custom, but I really liked it, and I thought that they had a good gear setup along with the shifter. And overall, the package of the robot was nice. They just had some simple stuff going on, and I... I like it when teams stick to simple stuff but make it look like it'll actually work. And they had bumper mounts, so their bumpers can go on, which is good. Yeah, uh, it's normally a good thing to have, uh, some bumper mounts. It's a nice job uh, from the cheesy oofs. Um, all right, uh, let's move on to our next team, which is Team 444. Catherine, what did you think of them? Yeah, so this team, uh, they had a lot going on flavor-wise. The, the team name is Darth Plagueis's Wise Men, which I thought was funny. And then the name of the robot was Abeloth, which is something from the Star Wars universe. It was really cool. I'll say, they mentioned this in their scouting document, that their computers were having a lot of trouble with this model. My, computers, my computer was having a horrible time opening this model. Because, so whatever you put into this file, just throw it away and burn it. It was awful. Crashed my computer <laughs> so many times. Oh, my goodness. Hardest file to work with the entire, like, out of all the submissions. But the robot itself is actually really good. There's a lot of detail going on. There's a really cool swerve. Um, they, they one of the few custom swerves that looked really, really good. Uh, they were using the Neo 550, which I kind of like that they, you know, nicked the cat for that and integrated it well. Um, so just overall, they had lots of cool stuff going on. Um, they had some... Some problems, they're running, like, some of their timing belts were running over an exposed metal edge. Um, definitely some things that wouldn't quite work as well in the real world. But overall, a fairly detailed submission, fairly compact, well-integrated. Um, and it was a good robot. So they ended up at rank 46. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> robot does, in fact, look really good. I like it. Uh, I like it a lot. If only it wouldn't keep crashing your computer. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I might try to open it now just for the heck of it. All right, have fun um, with it, because I tried uh, SolidWorks, Inventor, Onshape, and Fusion, and none of them opened it well. They were all bad. Nice. Yeah, I really want to see what's going on there. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, let's go on to our next team, uh, which is Team 460. Troy, what did you think of them? All right, so we got Team 460 Meat Pie Robotics. Uh, we ended up placed ranked 24. Uh, in general, it seems like someone was like, you know what, we're going to build a double-jointed arm that passes through the entire robot, and they catted the rest of the robot around that. So there were like a lot of design compensations made to make that arm work, uh, and you can definitely see it. Uh, the arm itself, I kind of had some issues. They were using like a half-inch hex shaft to join the whole thing, which seems kind of sketched to me. And uh, one of the things I was kind of realizing later on is like, those Neos are three wires, then an encoder wire, and you've got the motor controller in the base of the drivetrain. So you got to run all those wires all the way through a double-jointed arm, and there's like three of them. So that seems like it would kind of be a pain, but, you know, catathon. <laughs> it seems like, uh... yeah, never mind. <laughs> all right, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our next team, uh, which is Team 521. Team 521, Small Brain from FRC 865 and FRC 1086. Uh, was used in SOLIDWORKS, made me happy. But they're, uh, they used a lot of pneumatics, which I, I found was different than a lot of other teams in Catathon. A lot of teams just use motors because um, it's easier, but I think that they made good use of even small, like really small stroke pistons, which was pretty interesting. Um, overall, the robot was simple. It was just a quick intake to a claw mechanism, and I don't think they could really shoot or do anything unless they are on that one side so uh it's quick and simple but i like that their gusseting was detailed and everything seemed like you could actually assemble it um and their 
connection with the I don't know. I, I really liked how they used like they actually used encoders, which was nice, and they used um, Eclipse, and just made sense. And it's good when it makes sense, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I like things that make sense. Uh, I can't agree with you there. Now, moving on to our next team, Cawthorn. What is it with you getting the teams with all the great names? Yeah. Uh, what was going on with Team Two Two Eight? Yeah, Team Two Two Eight. NASA's secret seesaw. I liked this one a lot. Unfortunately. If you look closely, you might something might notice something a bit weird about that robot. They didn't read the rule manual well enough, and they designed the robot around a four-inch diameter puck. Unfortunately, the puck is eight inches in diameter, so it's a good, it's a pretty good robot all told. They just everything was literally half the width it needed to be. Um, aside from that, they still had some really cool stuff. Their drive gearbox, their drivetrain was really cool. A very nice looking custom gearbox with like a, kind of that double Colson wheel setup that uh, 971 I think used in 2017. Um, overall, they've got, I mean, it's a good submission. They've got like this cool, this arm that flips over, this intake uh, works pretty well, ferries it into a shooter. Shooter looked all right. Overall, fairly good, um, but it's all predicated on just the wrong sized game piece by a lot to um we can overlook like a inch or off or some things you know some geometry that looks a bit weird but um read the rule book guys read it read it read it rtfm um all all told nasa secret seesaw ended up at rank 51 yeah it looks like it would have been a really good robot um but to quote everyone in chat um f yeah they also had a cool logo i liked that they made like a, a logo for their uh catathon team which is really cool but read the manual. Read the manual. All right, uh, let's move on to our next team. Uh, maybe their team name doesn't want us to, but we're going for it anyways. Team 463. Okay, so we've got team no here. Just It's just no. Uh, so we've got two team members. Uh, main thing about this was uh, when I read their scouting document, they called it a West Coast Drive wheel and tube. Those terms are mutually exclusive. You can't. You, you can't do that. Um, but basically, so they had this kind of handoff system with some neat geometry, missing a lot of detail once you get further into the robot. Uh, I kind of had some issues with their intake. It seemed like it could actually high center the robot, which could definitely be an issue. We saw 2017 catching on tape and stuff was a like, very pronounced problem. Um, but yeah, otherwise, just kind of simple, reasonably nifty looking bot just needs some more detail. That was their main point doc. The wheel in tube West Coast Drive. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Uh, good good on them for making new terms, I guess. All right, uh, let's move on to our next team, which is Team 487. Yeah, Team 487, upside down English catathon, um, confusing us all the time with the wrong number bumpers and everything. But they were ranked 50, <laughs> and they're from FRC 1533. The robot reminded me a lot of like a shopping cart, um, but what it didn't remind me of is a well-balanced shopping cart because their battery is just sitting on one side waiting to fall over. So some points off for that. I also mentioned um, their bumpers are really high, like almost as high as the puck. So basically they're probably going to get stuck in the middle of a match. So they got some points off for that. But I like the swerve. The swerve was cool. I don't think it was... Um, pre-catted so plus one for that and they had encoders so like plus 10 for that um there wasn't really a way for them to shoot other than this small piston on the end of their virtual four bar arm so uh, good luck to their teammates i guess but the renders were pretty cool so plus points for that yeah and hey uh they should get a little bit on the detail they left the neo wires in oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah a lot of the detail yeah all right, uh, let's move on to the next team, uh, which is Team 426. Catherine, what did you think of them? Yeah, it's Team 426. Um, aluminum Aardvarks. These, gosh, you guys are giving us great names. Um, these are great. This was uh, looks to be like a fairly fairly new catters, uh, and it's really good to see that they they again they set out to do something and they got all the parts of the robot on there, which is great. Um, they have a pretty good West Coast Drive drivetrain. Um, they use the flipped. Uh, gearboxes and actually utilized it uh, they needed that space in the middle of their chassis and so they used 
the correct gearboxes for that, which I really appreciate. Um, and you can see they just have a simple intake outtake um, actuated with pneumatics. Not entirely sure how well their intake would actually work. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really extend past the little front edge. And so a lot of times I think they're just going to be pushing pucks away. Uh, but overall, a fairly good submission, relative, moderately detailed. They uh, they catted in their uh, ba bump battery mounting, which is very appreciated. No batteries floating in space. And so overall, just a good uh, submission from some people that are starting out. So aluminum aardvarks ranked in at 66. Uh, nice job from the uh, aluminum aardvarks. Another great name. All right, uh, let's move on to team 473. All right, so uh, these guys, as their Catathon team name points out, they are team 1778 and then colon chill out. So FRC team number included in there. They placed rank 52. Uh, immediate impression when the elevator's down, it looks like a little guy holding up a girder. That's just what got me. But uh, so they've got that sideways scoring going on. Seems like they've kind of got a trough that would go to either side. Reminds me of 4613 this year. But uh, they're missing a lot of detail, missing the actual intake, unless it's just that flippy bit, which I don't, I don't trust that that's going to work very well at all. Um, but yeah, mainly just missing detail is the problem here. But the overall uh, strategic design was interesting to see. Yeah, really, uh, really interesting design that they had going on there. Uh, yeah, I can definitely see the holding up the girder there. Um, all right, uh, let's move on to our next team. Brian, why don't you tell us about Team 493? Well, I'll, I'll tell you about Team 493. So Tech Min Robotics here is uh, Alejandro from 5669, um, Mechanum Robot. So there you go. Um, <laughs> they got the electronics in, though, so good work there. But it's perf board, so there's a lot of ups and downs in this robot. It's like, oh, they got the electronics, but it's perf board. So a lot of mixed emotions. They had some cool ideas. They had, like, a weird cnc crazy 118 looking block that connects oh, three okay. pieces of box tube into one joint and then some weird gearbox going on for the mechanum wheels um i guess if you're gonna do mechanum they did it right i don't think there is the right way to do mechanum but i guess <laughs> this is if, it's a, if there is one then it's this yeah i uh i really like their uh exploded render of that gearbox there yeah. uh and, i love the exploded yeah. view that's great yeah yeah and uh you should uh let 118 know where they can buy gold mechanums so they don't have to have uh people sharpening their rollers for them uh <laughs> all right um let's move on from this just gold winning robot um and go to team 361 Team 361, CAD fused. I can relate to that sentiment sometimes. Uh, good submission. If you look closely, you'll notice the vectored intake wheels are on backwards. This is one of those submissions that got them wrong. Ah, that's my pet peeve, guys. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, but overall, this is a fairly thorough model. Um, they've got a uh, full uh, West Coast Drive drive train. They've got um, kind of the intake and the handoff to a shooter. Uh, it's a single wheel um horizontal shooter which is pretty cool kind of reminiscent of 2013 um those shooters was just kind of cool um though they did suffer they didn't consider like inertia kinetic energy stuff like that um overall pretty pretty complete pretty thorough that though though there are quite a few conflicts throughout this model unfortunately lots of things running into each other in the cad so definitely deducted some points through there but overall team cad fused um ended up at rank 58 yeah, you could tell that they were very uh, CAD fused with the way to throw those mechanum wheels on there. Yep. Um, yep. You hate to see it. All right, uh, let's move on to our last team uh, before CAD before our drawing for our second giveaway, Team Four Seventy Five. So we got Team Four Seventy Five, Team Milk here. They placed thirty first in the catathon, FRC Forty Four Seventy Six. Uh, they were talking about how they designed for their own manufacturing process. So that's a kind of nice thing to see in Catathon when it kind of drives their specific decisions. But uh, they had some neat detailing on the belly pan. Uh, I don't think you really see it in the renders. But the main thing for me was that they claimed 25 cycles per match and with a slower drivetrain too. So I'm not, I'm not really seeing that, uh, to be honest. They had this pretty neat uh, kind of modified beaver tail design 
using wheels that are kind of only on the top in bevel gears to kind of center and pull that puck into their robot in a more efficient way than some of the plastic mechanum designs. And uh, yeah, just kind of interesting to see this robot designed for a very specific set of manufacturing resources for the most part. Yeah, that, uh, that intake reminds me a bit of 1241s, I believe, from last year, if I recall, um, where they had the wheels set up like that. Um, so cool to see a Canadian team take in input from another Canadian team. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.